So, last we left off with the Nine Hells Company. They had misplaced their teleport, where they ended up in a different forest to the one intended. A forest beginning with G, but not Golfamere Forest. It was a different one with humid temperatures, jungle-like atmosphere, and a singular island in the middle of some water. They were quickly set upon by druids that lived in this place, so they decided to quickly find somewhere to hide. John Claude, being the ranger, picked up some poo and smelt it, and this seemed to inc indicate to him to climb underneath a tree and get everyone else to climb underneath with him. He then did a... What's his name out of the Hunger Games? I keep forgetting his name. Some... Peter! Some, not... not Peter, thank you. He did, decided to do a Peter and start pulling bark and mud and cake his skin to look like his surroundings and press up against the tree as he stood solemnly still next to the entrance as he started hearing this <laughs> sniffing sound of a strange animal from behind the bushes. And then a voice came out telling the party to surrender. They all eventually came out of the tree and surrendered their arms to the druids. That were the Emerald Enclave. They were swiftly led back through the jungle, back to the settlement of Sapra. They passed a weird illusion waterfall, which promised the reward of treasure if they only reached out and grabbed it. But they all decided not to take the bait and pressed on, where they found a bamboo prison cage with this mad mage in there who was drawing pictures with some more poop. The party were reluctant to go in there, as they weren't fit conditions for anyone to be in, let alone themselves. After some back and forth, and a fu very frustrated DM, he decided to move on with bringing in the leader of the enclave to usher the party in to the longhouse of Sapra where one of the arch druids of one of the circles of the Emerald Enclave sat on this tree-like chair at the back of the longhouse. The party knew before they entered that this druid had a hate for magic and magic users alike seemingly a bias towards them, and of the recent tear in the sky, little can blame her at the moment. So the party had to navigate their way through an awkward situation and negotiate their release, declaring themselves not intruders of the island that seemed to nullify all magic around it, and say it was simply a mistake. They managed to convince her and chart a passage back onto mainland Faerun. Befriending the Lord Mayor, he sent his son, Philip, with the party to help sail the boat and then bring the boat back once they were safely in the nearby settlement of Allegan. Before departing, Fiddle, maybe feeling some sympathy or maybe thinking there's more to him than meets the eye, decided to go back into the bamboo prison to fetch the man that was drawing with his poop, the mad mage, Eryxa, as the party got onto the raft and disembarked past the reef that formed a natural fortification around the island, past the six water elementals that stood guard, and sailed back out into the sea and towards John Claude's local John Claude's home of the bakery. John Claude's location of the bakery. John Claude's. The place where John Claude's shop is. Right. Now we're back in the session. Oh, thank fuck for that. Okay. So. We're picking back up with the session as you're just sailing on this raft out from Sapra and towards Allegan. Right. You're passing the natural. It is sort of like. So it's. It's a sailing vessel, and it does form like a vessel, but like how it's built is very... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's almost like a barge, you know, like out of The Hobbit, um, sort of, but it's got like a sail on it, and, you know, 
it does work somewhat. Okay. That's good. Uh, um, good to yeah, know. kind of picture like uh, Moana and, you know, what they, they all kind of used. Um, I see. So like a large canoe like, out of Moana or like one of the little ones? Uh, the the larger ones, you know, the like um, ones. like yeah, what the Indonesian people used. Uh, yeah, so you uh, you got Philip on there as well as Arixa, and Philip sort of like taking charge with the sail, unless anyone else wants to take over from him. Um, sailing out from Sapra. No, don't think so. The man has grown up on the sea. He can he can take charge one hundred percent. When you say man, you're looking at like a fourteen year old human male like kid yeah he's, he's, he's been he's been told by his father to go sailing on the high seas I'm sure he's a man in their culture yeah yeah definitely he's um well he's looking after the smithy while his dad was working part-time mayor so exactly part-time mayor that's um, still ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> so as he's uh pulling on the sail and you're slowly making your way out from sapra past the natural fortificated reef around the island you see kind of it's their version of standing, but they look like they're kind of like almost in these like kind of water tornado sort of um, waving back and forth. These three water elements will stand on either side of you that are just kind of staring straight forward, not even noticing you sail past as you kind of like drift through the waters and it starts getting more choppier now as um starts leading your way through past the reef and into the open sea. Yeah, you start sailing your way into more choppier waters. Yeah, so you're basically on this passage for roughly around about six hours. Um, is there anything anyone would like to do while they're in the open waters? I feel like we used to have lots of things to do when we had like six hours downtime, but maybe it's when we sold all of our books or got rid of them all, lost our... When we stopped reading as a party, we sort of lost our things to do at this sort of time. Has it been 24 hours since I last tried to open my box? When did you try to open it? It was in the um, abandoned farmstead, wasn't it? I couldn't, I really couldn't tell you. So that we was... tried in... Hold on, I edited the episode a second ago. It was... Not the previous session, the one before. Where were we? Yeah, you you um just, just ran just out of sanctuary. We went off on the teleport. Yeah, yeah. When you we went off in the sanctuary, sanctuary yeah, and then it. you went to a farmstead. So that that is literally yesterday. So it has not been twenty four hours, unfortunately. Yesterday. Yesterday in game. Yeah. But now is the morning. I you see. In the last evening. night. Yes. Oh, last night. Okay. Last Fine. Night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like 24 hours, not being 24 hours yet. Probably better to say it that way. Um. So come on then. What books have we got? What books have you got in your in your in your bag, JC? It's been a long time since any of us read a book. Is there any fishing line on the boat, Ollie? Uh, fishing line. Um, roll, yeah. roll an investigation check. Okay, one sec. On this very plain flat raft. <laughs> <laughs> I know the problem with the books. What was it? The only books left were massive ones. If you spend 48 hours over a six day period. Oh, that was the problem. We yeah, smash you've got to spend one ones. third of all time over the next six days. That's quite a lot of time. I got a five. You got you got a five. Um, a five, yeah. Uh, you're looking around and you do see some fishing line, Sole, and you go to walk to the front of the barge and you see Philip, who's on the sail, who's so currently pulling on the sail, so the front is kind of lifted up. He's like, wait, 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 and you walk to the front and because your weight kind of like um, tips the boat forward, so you kind of nosedive into a wave and you kind of slip over and the fishing line falls off the boat as you come back out over the wave once more. <laughs> and um, yeah, he pulls the sail once oh, more. He's yeah. like, stay, stay at the back of the boat, please. <sighs> I walk over Sorry. to Soleil Sorry. and 
use magic to create a, uh, a fishing rod if I'm allowed. Please God. Okay, so you, you, <laughs> you go to rub your hands together and you're like, you pull them apart. And a fishing rod appears. Yes! Magic Ooh. me now! Oh, I'm so happy. Magic is back. Magic is back, everyone. Magic is back. And I pass the slightly slightly glowing golden fishing rod to Sole. Okay, here you go. You'll need Thank to find you. some bait. But maybe turnip would work. If no you speak worries. To JC. Okay. JC! Uh, yep. Yeah, I overheard the conversation. I'm just French, French. thinking. <laughs> okay. Um... I'm, I'm not sure turnip will work. It's better than nothing. We it's can start with turnip. What if I wiggle it? Ah, we can... If you give me a bit of turnip, I can do some magic on the turnip to make it taste like anything else. Um, Forgive me if I'm wrong, but... If it tastes like something, surely the fish needs to be attracted to the thing in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you know, taste and smell, I assume. Okay, I've got a cunning plan. What's the water like? Like wet and blue? How cold is it? Yeah, very salty. Uh, very. Uh, it's not. It's not super choppy. It's like um, sunny out at the moment. So you're looking at. It's very hot at the moment. Okay. Uh, I would what, like what you, to try and to... swim and dive for some kind of crab. Um. Or how deep? How deep is it? You can certainly try, John Claude. <laughs> okay. Oh there. <laughs> well, can I, before he does this, just grab him by the shoulders? Like, well, what are you doing right now? How... We're in the open ocean. <laughs> how quick uh, are we? Uh, well, yeah, we've only just started, haven't we? So we've literally just left. So we might still be shallow. Let's just let let me roll. Okay. Uh, this would be. Um... I don't know if acrobatics play into swimming or not. Um, to the first thing that comes to mind is athletics. I think athletics is more for swimming. Yeah. I was hoping you'd let me roll survival because I'm trying to catch something. Uh, it's it's not, not it's swim. not that so much. Trying, trying to swim against the crashing well, not the crashing waves, but the choppy waters and stuff to the point where you don't get pulled adrift too far from where the boat's going. I mean, I can go and pick him up once he's once he's caught a crab. I could always tie myself to the boat with 50 feet of hemp and rope. Ooh, what a good idea. Why doesn't Phil just turn into a dolphin and go get some yeah, crabs? Yeah, I was about to say, I might just... Might just turn into a dolphin. <laughs> maybe, maybe John Claude fancies the challenge. Hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, step, I'd, like you, you turn, I'd like you to turn Claude. into Owlbear from the D&D movie, because that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we can't. I don't think we're allowed to plug that in. I, I can't. We I can't, can't owlbear? Into, I can't turn into an owlbear, unfortunately. I'm, I'm not a druid. <laughs> Damn. I can turn into an owl or a bear. <laughs> <laughs> but owlbear, owlbear kicked ass. <laughs> um, okay, so, John Claude, I, I will say, roll me an uh, athletics check to start with, and then there'll be a survival check to actually see if you can just grab it. Oh, wait, a is it, isn't, isn't Fiddle turning into a dolphin? Well, if, they, if that's where you um, want to go with as well but i thought you were you wanted you were determined to test yourself i think it is my plan give me 30 seconds though yeah he's just taking too long well i'm already tied in now so what am i rolling athletics check aha wait is he in the water yet yeah athletics check and i failed it He's drowning. <laughs> He's drowning. <laughs> What'd you get? Seven. Seven. Okay, so you see, uh, Fiddle, as you start flipping through your book to see different um, animal shapes to polymorph into, um, mm. you hear a splash behind you and some water like uh, spits up in your face and you're like, you look behind, you see John Claude's dived in and as soon as he's dived in, he's like disappeared. Five seconds. Ten seconds. And then you start seeing the the line get tugged where he's um, fastened the hempen rope to the boat and then you see him come up for water he's like <coughs> straight back down again as he starts swimming back up <coughs> he's back down again he's struggling to 
swim as he's uh, been caught in. Uh, Helms, I was, Bill, I was struggling does this to man swim. know how to swim? Uh, but now, uh, now can I roll to just happen across uh, a crab or a fish <laughs> in my hand? Sh- sure, roll, roll a survival check for luck, I guess. Yes. Come on. No! <laughs> uh, I got a nat 1, but it was a plus 13, so it was a 14. <laughs> nat 1 to nat 1, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, I'm <laughs> eaten by a shark. <laughs> <laughs> so, John Claude, you you dive Fuck. down and you manage to uh, find some shallow shallow reef, and you rake your hand along it to like kind of grab anything, <laughs> and um, you feel a prick on your finger. He's got the sea urchin. Uh, yeah, and you come back up for water. You got something on your hand, and you look over it, and you got a sea urchin stuck into your palm. <laughs> Ah, that'll oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're you're all seeing now as um you see John Claude sort of like got this in his hand while he struggling to stay afloat. There's a trickles of blood that's starting to trail behind him. He can still eat sea urchins though, so it's not a loss. <sighs> well, okay, fine. I step out into the middle of the boat and my hands. I make like a sigil in the sky, big flash of light, my hands slowly start turning purple and I flop onto the floor and slowly I start squelching and squelching and I become a giant octopus <laughs> as I <laughs> flop myself I into the water. Him off the boat. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say, roll me a deck saving throw because if you're doing it on the raft, you might accidentally capsize it. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> <For fuck's sake. laughs> okay. <laughs> we can't just take a fucking boat journey. <laughs> okay. We, we so can't go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All we have to do is one. stay still. Okay, I got a six. To go <laughs> okay, I'm gonna roll for <laughs> Philip to see if he can keep the boat. <laughs> Gregory's just having a meltdown on the raft. He's <laughs> He's like sleep deprived so growing and growing uh, in size and <laughs> flopping about. Uh, okay, so you flop, yeah, uh, you flop onto the raft. Uh, the raft like kind of gets launched to the side a little bit, and then you see Phillips like almost hanging off the other side of the boat with the kind of uh, sail uh, over his shoulders, where he's using all his weight to kind of pull it the other way, and then you flop into the water, and then he gets dunked in <laughs> as um. Sole and Gregory, you're sort of having to like lean on the other side to kind of level it back out again as um the boat survives. It's all good. Nice. Um That's you're like all drenched you... now. But yeah. Where, where's Philip? Is Philip in the water? No, no, F- Philip's still on. Um Eryx is still okay. on. Uh you and Sole are still on. You're all good. This is a disaster. We are quite useless. Well, with that excitement out of the way, I'm going to go and swim down to uh, to where JC is being dragged along by the boat. And uh, he's sort of like on near the tentacles. surface at the moment. He's sort of like keeping himself afloat, so he's not drowning, but yeah, he's getting dragged along. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh yeah, now it's like a terrible time to mention that I, uh, I don't like crab. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find you something different. I'm going to grab him with one of my tentacles, grab the rope with the other, pull my beak it's up, not to and eat. snap it's the fish. snap the snap the uh, snap the rope, snap and the then rope. Swim back after the boat with JC in my hand. Okay. Or what's in your one of my tentacles? And what's your uh, flick him we... back up onto the uh, uh, sixty feet swim speed? Oh yeah, yeah, more more so, than easy enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm incredible. I'm an octopus. I'm incredibly dexterous in the water. Then I'm gonna, yep, swim up after the boat, flip him back on board, and then go a hunting. Okay, I'll say, roll me a survival check then. A survival check. Well, that's, that's what I made JC roll, so. So I'm gonna lobby you here a little bit. <laughs> What the fuck do you my want? Intelligence, my intelligence and my wisdom are pretty bad as a giant octopus. And survival is based on wisdom. wisdom. I think a giant octopus would be better at hunting for fish than its wisdom score would allow. 
What what skills is an octopus good at? Stealth and perception and strength. Hmm, perception. I don't know. You know, a giant octopus would be able to go and catch a bunch of fish. Otherwise, it would starve and die, and we would have no giant octopuses. Maybe they do in Faerun. You never know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they're all just use it. Uh, I, I'll say you can use perception, but <clears throat> just finding fish in front of you and nabbing it, like you got to like hunt for it in mm, some that's aspect. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. Well, perception's a plus four, so I quite like that. There you go. Not all bad. Nice. That's a ten overall. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll say um. By this time, like, Philip's sailing for a good, like, 30, 40 minutes, and you're all sort of back on the boat. John claude you're, like, having to, like, bandage up your hand. Um, you've lost your hemping rope, by the way, so you have to mark that off your inventory. Um, well, I, I mean, I cut it pretty close to where he was. He could now pull 48-foot hemping rope. <laughs> <on his boat>. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being generous... Because, again, it's usually <laughs> once you've used it and it's sort of destroyed in some manner, it's gone, or if you've got forgotten about it. But I'll say you can have half the amount <laughs> left. Such a generous god. I don't know how I'd mark that down. It, that's what I mean. It, it, especially in the app, you're like, you've got, yeah, you've got the uh, item or you don't. So Yeah, that's fine. I'll just ditch it. Okay. <laughs> But bear in mind, I think it's only like five copper or something stupid like that. Yeah, to get we'll pick you up a new, a new coil of rope. Oh, I've got two statues of Malar. Nice. Me too. Um, yeah, about forty minutes, and then um, so what are you on the hunt out, on the lookout for specifically, Fiddle, as an octopus? I mean, eight three creatures, I suppose. I've got eight arms that I can bring all of it back to the boat with. So, yeah, whatever sea creatures I can find. Okay. Preferably uh, edible for humans. Or, you know, humanoids. But yeah, any sort of three sea creatures I can find. I want to grapple them with my arms and squeeze them to death. And, uh, <laughs> swim okay. back to uh, the boat and drop them all on board. Roll me um, athletics check then to see how many creatures you can catch and squeeze to death. Nice, nice. That's a s 18. 18. Okay. So, as I said, 40... 45 minutes pass on the raft is um is sort of making its way through the choppy waters and then you start seeing all these different fish just start flung up flinging up into the raft it's like raining fish and then you see this octopus peek its head out of the water as um you have caught eight fish very nice very nice are they pretty big fish i'd like to grab one Cut one up and then stick it on the end of the fishing line. Um, okay, so you walk over. No, my sea urchin. <laughs> <laughs> I can use that as well. Thank you. Yeah, was JC so okay they... through this from his sea so urchin? I'd just like to remind you that you you don't now need to fish. <laughs> no, I... it's not these, the point. I don't the want to eat fish. I just want to pass time. You guys can stare at nothing if you like. Actually, I suppose you've made quite a valid point there. Actually. Um, oh, what a surprise. <laughs> it is, actually. It's quite surprising. I'm actually quite intelligent. intelligent see? Sorry? <laughs> what is that? Nice. <laughs> Brain just no, died. In no, one. <laughs> Thanks. You know what I mean. I go back to fish. Okay, so you put the fish on the line, you go out, out to no, the back the of the sea raft. Urchin. And the sea urchin, I'll grab this sea urchin off of um, out of Jason's well, hand. Well, the sea yeah. urchin will yield good results. Well, you're using it as bait, are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you put that I on. I think the sea urchin will genuinely be good bait. Mm. I was really I chuffed so. when you said I had a sea it urchin. It is, a lot of fish do actually eat it. Okay. Uh, what do you roll for a fishing skill? <laughs> Survival, I mean, almost certainly. <laughs> we're just playing Club Penguin at the moment. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, roll me a survival check. Um, and I'll say with a sea urchin, you get, um, plus one, two, I don't know. <laughs> plus two, sure. Oh, such a 
<laughs> Gotta love a DM who sticks with his convictions. <laughs> yeah, plus I don't know, two. You guys make it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking done. Right, so that will be a what? Well, I get plus two. You get two. plus two on top of your roll and your modifier. Okay, cool. So that's a nineteen. Nice. Okay, so. In about the same time Very frame nice. that Fiddle went to get the <laughs> She's called the blue whale. Uh, <laughs> eight, roughly at the same time, you managed to pull out nine fish. So you managed to beat Fiddle's um, octopus form <laughs> by, whoa, whoa, by whoa, one whoa. fish. Nine fish. When I whoa, catch whoa, them, I'll throw them back. How long did it take her to catch those nine fish? That was the uh, same time frame, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Interesting. So do I not catch I, a single Yeah, I'm going to throw them fish? back. I don't want to eat them, what? by the way. <laughs> well, you don't need chucking them back. Yes, because I am not a murderer. I don't want to eat them. I'm just bored. Okay, so... I'm just fishing for pleasure. Pinches. So, Sole's got nine on it's her tally. It's not about hunger. And uh, Fiddle's got eight. Nice. JC's got a sea urchin. <laughs> JC's got sea urchin, which is worth 20. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. I'd like to talk to Philip. Okay, so mm. you walk cool. over to Philip, who's, um again, he, he's kind of dressed in, um, what's the mate you called out of Treasure Planet? Um, you know, like a, just a baggy, baggy white tunic. Um, he's got like three quarter length uh, trousers. He's got taken off his boots and stuff and he's just currently sailing and he's uh wrapped a bandana around his head to keep his curly black hair at the side which is kind of blowing in the wind as he's sort of like just sailing and looking forward with intent as you walk up to him i think you're Hello. talking about jim hawkins that's the one jim hawkins but this is philip he just looks over and he's like um hello you're all right okay how are you? He just looks to the side. He's like, I'm good. That's that's good. So, uh, nice weather you, we're um, having, isn't it? Oh. Oh. No, you, you go first. I'm sorry. No, 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 please. No, sorry. no, no. It's okay. No, you go first. Wait, I said, um, oh. Are you, um, it's nice. It is sunny. It, it definitely is. Yes. Are you um enjoying the voyage? I suppose, yes. Are you? It's alright. Yes. It's bearable. Hmm. You uh you do this often? Um I'm not really interested, but cheers. I guess. <laughs> what? Are you are you asking me out? No. Oh. What oh, I mis I misread this entirely. Yes, I think it's just you the did. way you. It was just the way you were looking at me, and you know, you, you, you weren't blinking. You were just staring in my eyes the whole time. I was. I, I didn't even make eye contact. Oh well. Um. Oh. This is Thank awkward. You, looking out at the horizon. I was about to ask you how long we've got left. Uh, about five hours. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, well, now I have to sit here for five hours. Awkward. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, if you're going to ask someone out, do it at the end of the voyage. So, you I'm know, not asking case... you out. I'm asking you how you were. Two completely different... Why do people keep doing this to me? What do you mean? I simply engage in casual conversation, and they all assume that instantly I want to have sex with them. What? <laughs> What? I wouldn't. I wouldn't assume that. You did. No, I thought you fancied me. That's what? completely different. What you're talking about? What do you? What do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What, what do I, I said? Mean? Gregory, why are you fighting with our captain? I'm not fighting with him. He, he said some very derogatory things about me. Derogatory? I what did, did he not. Say? He did. He, he he implied that I'd like to sleep with him. He's what? a fourteen-year-old boy. <laughs> why I did oh. say that? Yeah, I was about to say why is that derogatory, but <laughs> good point. He is a fourteen-year-old boy. I mean, I'm a man. 
But you're not really though, are you? Well, <laughs> well, maybe not by like your mainlanders' values, but where you know in Sapra, man, am I in right? Are you? Or are you having a midlife crisis already? Are you? What? No. Yeah, exactly. Like. I don't really know why. Why? Why? Why did you come over here well, to heckle just, me? No, just to make conversation. Five hours we've got. It's getting bored. Five hours well, is a long time. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie, but like, if you want to speak to anyone, maybe any points behind your shoulder to um Erixa, and he's like. Maybe speak to him and keep him distracted because he keeps biting at the raft. And if he keeps going the rate he is, we're not going to have one by the time we reach Alagan. I have to be honest with you, I would rather talk to you than a man that, you know, smears shit on the wall. Yeah, that's fair enough. He's a bit weird. Yeah, more than a bit. How long do I think it would take me to fly? I can fly at 80 feet per round or double dash and, you know. 100 and 160 feet per round. Oh, you you get there in you you get there in about an hour and a half, maybe. Hour and a half. I've already burnt you, you one would, of my you, This is this is going this is going at 20, um, 20 feet around. Hmm. I probably can't take what's his face with me there, can I? Probably can't take all of us. <sighs> it would be funny to leave Gregory here, but. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. I'm going to go and sit down next to the wizard man. Okay. So he's currently, um, he's taken off his clothes again. Um, you guys made him put on his robes and then he's just thrown him back off again and put him to the side. He's currently at the front where it's kind of um, tilted up. And he's biting at the corner of the raft and taking away like chunks of the wood. And he's sort of like chewing it, spitting back out and then biting some more. It's kind of alarming. It is a little bit alarming, yes. <laughs> Why did you bring him? Did... I can't remember. Did I end up getting a, like, spell book from him? Or any of his, like, writings? He did have a bunch of books with him, actually, yes. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe I'd like to have a look through those first instead of walking up next to him. Well, maybe. No, actually, okay, yeah. So you... Sorry. I'm going to walk over to him. Sorry? Yeah, I'm going gonna to look at him. And I'm going to say, hey, hey, buddy. <laughs> huh? He just uh, turns around to look at you like Gollum style. <laughs> can I, um, can we have a chat? <laughs> <laughs> Trixie one. <laughs> yeah, Trixie one. But Trixie tri chats. Trixie friend. <laughs> Trixie one can see it, Jim. <laughs> mm -hmm. Trixie friend. Trixie friend, me, mm -hmm. me, Trixie friend. He just goes back to bite in the uh the wood again. Okay, I'm gonna cast charm person on him. <laughs> okay. What's the uh safe? Uh wisdom nineteen. Okay. Uh he's charmed. Beautiful. Yeah, hello. Um, I just just wanted to uh, speak to you about these books that that I believe are yours. Ah, books. <laughs> these books are bad. Why? Why? Bad. Why? Bad. Why are they bad? Bad. And he starts like banging his head like his skull starts knocking it. Hmm. Not really getting anywhere with this. There's not much left of the poor man. Let me put him out of his misery. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah, evil, evil that. Evil, tricksy evil. <laughs> He's eating wood fiddle. I know. What is left of this man's mind is clearly scrambled. Does seem that way. Can I roll an insight check to see how much there is of him left? Yeah, sure. Roll an insight check. <clears throat> no, that's a four. Stand up, pick up the books and go, no, there's nothing left. <laughs> okay. So you, you leave them to start chewing away at the raft a bit more. Yep, amazing. I'm going to go and uh, 
sit over by um, by the other side of the raft and uh, read through the books, see what I can learn from these books, see what they are. Okay, rolling investigation check. Nice. <sighs> I can What'd you get? That one. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you go to open up the books and um as you finally settle down and you start like blocking out everything around you to get into that study mindset you hear philip shout out rogue wave as he um goes to pull the sail and it crashes against the raft and you get completely drenched as well as the books lovely <laughs> yeah, as he's like kind of like pulls back the sails he's like sorry about that Ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spend the next five minutes uh, prestidigitating the books back to being dry. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, because that's usually what the check is for that um, interaction, um, you can't seem to get them dry um, at the point you have to wait for a period of time for yeah, them no to like, really get fine as the ink's all a bit smudged now. Yeah, that's all good. No worries, I'll leave them to uh, to dry out. Okay. Right, is there anything anyone else wants to do this during the voyage? What's the verdict? I mean, I can do it. Look at him, he's eating wood, the poor thing. No, 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 that seems... That seems bad. Well, look, <sighs> look at the ruin of a man he is. What are we even going to do with him? Well, I've I've sort of got a plan for that. I've got a plan for that. We sort of need to be stationary, though, to, to do that plan. You see, Fiddler, I, I don't know how well that plan is going to work. What do you mean? Look at him. There's... You don't know my plan. I know your plans, though, and they tend not to work. My plans work fine. We, what? How dare you, sir? So you remember not three hours ago when you tried to teleport us to the f and it just kind of didn't work uh, yes yes but I don't see your teleport working any better I've got dimension door it's, it's pretty spot on <laughs> do you <sometime>. remember <laughs> do you remember when you left the pub to go and have a friendly chat with that woman <laughs> which woman <laughs> the woman who now doesn't have a head do you remember when you walked into that very same pub and shouted very loudly who we were and what we were here to do? <laughs> yes. Do you remember when you set out to square vengeance <laughs> on your wife to find Sigismund Molich, planning to cut him down oh, if you oh, saw him? Oh, oh. Do you remember, remember when that we time were heroes? That you... <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that time no, when we tried to save Salt Rock but then somehow managed to end up at Candlekeep with all of our comrades dead? You remember when you married Elizabeth? I do. It's quite a good day, actually. Sorry, that Best was a day bit... of my life. <laughs> it was a bit too. And funny. now look at me. Look at us squabbling on a boat about a man that's lost his mind. He's eating the boat. Have you ever <laughs> seen that before? It's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> he's just, he's just like. <laughs> look at that man and tell me God exists. Uh, I would like to take a boat out of that man's mouth and replace it with fish. Hmm. Um, Clever, Jason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll me a sleight of hand check to not get your Ooh. fingers nipped. Okay. My fingers are gone. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you, you get? Roll? I got a nat one. No, Jesus. <laughs> That's like the third nat one in a row now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, uh, you see JC walks up to the front of the boat, and JC, you look, look over his shoulder, and he's got like just this huge chunk of wood in his mouth. He's just chewing rigorously, and you go to like grab it and pull it out, and his eyes dart towards you, and then bites down onto your fingers. You take six points of damage as he pulls yeah. pulls some of the skin off. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Ah. Um, I would like to go and sit down, lean against the mast, and pull my hat over my eyes, and that is how I will spend the next five hours of the journey. 
<laughs> so are we all in agreement so, then? I realise that this wizard man is causing more hassle than he's worth on this five hour boat ride. My plan was to do this once we arrived at the place, but instead I'm going to walk over to the back of the boat. I'm going to look over at um, whatever his name was, the, the captain, and I'm just going to kick the anchor into the water. Go, okay, we're stopping. Okay, so you. <laughs> Why would you not just tell him that you wanted to stop? <laughs> uh, you kicked. Stop the criticizing over, me, Gregory. <laughs> Don't you so know what to do it. it doesn't make any sense. And um, you don't make you any see sense. in his eyes. You see in his eyes the way you guys be squabbling. Uh, Gregory's interaction now doing this. He's seriously like bit scared now that he's got on this wrath of you guys as you kick the Fine. anchor off. Um, Fine, you'll so be he's okay. Just like, you'll be okay. Um, well, Trust me. I, I'm, supposed, I'm, I'm supposed to take you to Allegan. I'm not supposed to stop. I know. You know it's really choppy know, around but, here. But we're, you know, we're high-flying heroes. We usually jump from place to place. I don't think any of us realised how torturous it would be to be stuck on a boat for five hours. <laughs> So I'm sorry. Well, it's, we're it's, taking we're taking it's matters not... into our very capable, adventurous hands. You're, and you're I'm, supposed as to I'm doing the, this, I'm the journey, to... not the destination. Okay. <laughs> as I <laughs> say all this to him, I'm drawing a teleportation circle on the on the floor of the boat. Um, okay. the for Candlekeep. Candlekeep. Yep. Yeah. And then when um, I when I blast it up, I'm just gonna push the wizard through with like maybe a note in his pocket. That explains okay. where he's from, explains what's happened to him, and just says, like, please take care of me. Okay, so you write in the note first, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to draw the draw the sigil, but not activate it first. Draw the note out on just a scrap of paper. Stick it in his pocket. Light the portal. And push him through. Uh, do you have um, parchment and uh, writing utensils? I must do. I must do. Well, y y you either do or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can see in my backpack. I have had at some point, but I don't know where they've gone. Okay, I pull out a page from my spellbook right at the back, and then I create a pen out of my magical thing. <laughs> okay. I swap up some uh, of the what, ink what that was, you know, get up some of the ink off the deck from when I was a giant octopus. <laughs> And <laughs> scribble out okay. the uh, scribble out the the note. You you make a really faded uh, note. Uh, what what are you trying? What are you writing on the note? Um. Yeah. This this wizard was found. Where are we? What island was it? Um. It's like uh, Illigon. Illigon. Yeah. I write. This wizard was found on the island of Illigon. Something has affected him, most probably something to do with the weave. Um, please look after him. Maybe one day I'll come and pick him up. Fiddle, God's wife. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I sign my name and stick it in his pocket. Okay. Um, sign it, Fiddle. Uh, okay, so as you light up the glyph, you put the um, letter into... I mean, he doesn't have pockets. He's got a loincloth on, but that's about it. Nice. Yeah, stick it in his loincloth. Or I stick it in his hand. <laughs> I, I open his hand up, put the note in his hand, clench his fist around it, and I go, hold on to this and hand it to the first person you see. I'd like to I roll persuasion at advantage because he's still <laughs> charmed. I say, yes. 10 gold he eats the paper. <laughs> it's another nat one on the first one, by the way. <laughs> But a seven on okay. the second one. Oh, I'm not taking that bet. Ten persuasion check. <laughs> There's a fourth ten, that one in a row. Um, <laughs> this boat is rubbish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he seems he seems hesitant, but does take the note. Um, however, goes back to bite in the ship. Um, nice. Doesn't no, no, I, seem I, I to want him. to. I don't let him. I'm gonna like manhandle him and start pushing him through the portal. <laughs> okay, that's going to be a contested grapple check because he doesn't want to leave that side of the ship. Okay, can I deception check him then and just be like, come come over here, there's some really nice wood over here in the middle of this sigil. 
<laughs> roll, roll a deception check. With advantage, because he's still... Um, whatever it's called, dude. That's a, it's a 19. 19. Um, he looks over, looks <laughs> over, like, the rest of the boat? I don't Look, really know. Honestly, like, this uh, wood okay. right here in the middle, it's, it's incredible. Will I ever lie to you? I'm your friend. It, he looks at you, and then he grabs another bit of wood from the corner where he's been chewing and then puts it in his mouth to take with him as he starts walking over cautiously nice, nice. and starts like kind of following you amazing um amazing like get him to stand know, right in the middle of the sigil frodo with Gollum, you know nice smeagol amazing. he's just like looking at you the whole time nice yeah i sort of slow down a little bit as he starts walking into the middle of the sigil so i'm not in the sigil okay and sort of just as he gets still there. follow him nice okay gone in in the middle in the middle, right there. That's the best bit of wood on the boat. He like <clears throat> stops before the um sigil. He just looks over at you, looks around at all of you, and looks at you, Gregory. Like <laughs> evil. And Gregory come up next to me. Evil. And me and Gregory stood next to each other, with him in front of us and the sigil behind him. <laughs> I just go, Gregory, now! As I click my fingers. (laughs) Um, Yeah, fuck it, I'll let it happen. (laughs) Thank you. You you launch him in, he's like... (laughs) As, um, yeah, you you, uh, fucking 300 boot him into this uh, circle. (laughs) So, like, fucking the glyphs glyphs launch up, and uh, in this weird um, shadowy state, he just disappears in midair, like freeze frames, and then... (laughs) Disappears as um, the sigil is no longer there. Erexa is no longer there. Nice, beautiful. I high five Hiddle and was like, "We're heroes! <laughs> We're heroes! Heroes!" <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Philip. Then. I think Philip I should... is looking to turn around the, the boat. He's like, oh. "Yeah, I go right. Come on, then. I think we should um, all hop on my back and I'll fly us to Alagan. That'll be way nicer than sitting on this boat. This is actually torturous." <laughs> See you later, Philip, you loser. See you later, Philip. <laughs> thank you very much for the lift this far. Thank you very much. Please um, say thank you to your father. We honestly just needed to get away from the island so that we could cast magic again. <laughs> I, Wait, I give him what? 10 gold. Like, please. <laughs> okay, he, you give him 10 gold. His eyes shoot up, and he's like, Um, thank you? Yes. You're welcome. Uh, you What? I'm still not going to kiss you, though. <laughs> oh. You're 15. <laughs> Leave it in your pants. I, I'm going to you, cast you, command. You see, he kind of, like, considers it. <laughs> I'm going to use command and say, jump in the water. <laughs> I'm going to cast count as well. I've, I think command's um, one oh, word Oh, just one word, well. yes. Just <laughs> dive. Dive, okay. Uh, I can't um, cast and spell. you're casting count yeah. count spell. What levels command? Um oh, it was just first level. Nice. Okay, so you go to cast command and before the words hit Philip, um you see fiddle um dissipate some magic before you, Gregory. Yeah, Gregory. It would have been come really on. funny. I know it would have been, been really funny. But like you just said. Supposed to be heroes. <laughs> but we are. He's just impetuous young child. Yes. Who needs to be yes. taught a lesson by yes, diving in the this, water? We do this with fine. everyone. Every single person we speak to, we get very mind-numbingly angry with them. <laughs> well, because they deserve it. Yes, come on. Let's try and shake off this uh, this bad funk. And <sighs> go be Everyone's an arsehole to... but me. Exactly. Exactly. Nine hells saving the world alone. Again. <laughs> We're, we're guess, not going to see... give any thank for this. Shut up, Philip. We're not talking to you right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Is everybody ready? Solo, you ready? JC? We're ready. All good. Good, good. And yeah. Philip, before we go, I'd like you to know one thing. No, uh, no. Just, I'm, I'm going that prick. way anyway. <laughs> right. You're a mean man, Gregory. <laughs> I, I polymorph into a giant eagle. 
Okay, you pull him off this giant eagle and once again almost send the boat capsizing nah, as you eagles kind of are, launch off eagles the Eagles are nice light. They've got hollow bands. Even a giant one. Giant eagle bear. Goliath. Giant eagle. Goliath. No way giant a giant eagle. eagle. No way a giant eagle weighs more than a Goliath. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have some conversations. Okay, Sounds right. <laughs> Fine. So, you launch off, you take two in your talons, one on the back as usual as you start <laughs> flapping nice. your way over the the waters and into beyond. As, uh, you know which way is north because you keen mind, so you know roughly the direction of Alagam. Nice. nice. Um, which is keeping... Almost directly west, basically. So um, you can follow that. Um, how long does your polymorph last, out of curiosity? Um, an hour, I think. So I might need to recast it. But I suppose I'll just get to get a nice bit of height. And as it's about to run out, I'll then unpolymorph. We'll all be in free fall for like six seconds as I recast it. And then <laughs> catch us all again. Okay. <laughs> so... That's going to be interesting. So, yeah, you've got an hour and a half journey, basically, for flying. Um, uh, with the rules, how it's written, how I've um, basically started running it since the um, Shadowfell thing, was um, you instantly descend up to 500 feet, and yeah. then you got your yeah. action, bonus action, reaction. Um, obviously, you get your reaction straight away on that. So if you get high enough well, yeah. up, you can maybe, have enough time. Maybe it would be better just to land in the water then. And then land in the water, drop everyone off, recast it, and then pick everyone back up and fly away. Yeah, pro probably for the best. So you, you fly for a bit, and then you land back into the water. Um, you're all a bit confused because obviously Fiddle didn't say this beforehand until he unpolymorphs. He's like, sorry, I just got cast it again once more. <laughs> and then polymorphs back on. You all nimbly managed to get on as you start flapping out of the water and towards... I, I assume it's going towards Allegan still, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay. So, as you fly past the ocean and you start seeing... Well, it seems like at this point, an arduous amount of time on the sea, you spot a city start clipping over the horizon. A giant metropolitan settlement of stone that towers on the coastline. It looks from a distance like a thousand fireflies illuminate the city as it starts coming from late afternoon to early evening so the sun is starting to set and uh, people starting to light their lanterns on the windows and you can see it stretches from horizon to horizon this city it's absolutely humongous and it builds on top of each other as well it is very big as uh, you start seeing it tower over the horizon and as you keep flying forward you see it starts it, it takes a long time. It's only until you're about two minutes out that it starts actually forming into coherent shapes. It looks like a mismatch of just stone that seems to like bend into each other. And uh, to look at it, maybe from an architectural point of view, it looks like a mess of a city. But nevertheless, it is there. Allegan. As you start flying forward, uh, Fiddle, where, whereabouts are you aiming to land? Um, the docks. <laughs> Just like the to docks, come in, okay. Come in nicely. Slowly drop two of them down on the docks and then land myself and unpolyport myself. Um, okay. <laughs> Maybe with a nice ca -ca! Just before I unpolymorph. Make a bit of a show of it. Um, Fiddle, what's your AC? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Um, as a, as a giant eagle, it is 13. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, as you're kind of all flying forward, and you're all starting to see this, uh, metropolitan city sort of lining up, you start seeing these two different shapes, like dots that come out into the sky, and they seem to be getting bigger, <laughs> forming into a shape, and getting closer, <laughs> as... As um two ballistas hit you, fiddle for twenty three points of piercing damage. Ooh, Jesus. As, um, okay. As um you're starting to hear shouting come from the coast coastline. As um you you're starting to hear like the uh, noise of like the city watch get into ballistas to prepare for all, uh, defense. <laughs> okay. Okay. How far what out are you are doing? We? 
Uh, well, I mean, in terms of if you're actually looking at combat, I'd say like you're looking at like probably about 300 feet. 300 feet. Okay. And how high up are we? Um, I mean, I I think that's kind of up to you, really. How you, you would have been flying, just cruising through. Oh, so. Three feet off of the ground. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to uh, yeah fold my wings in, like go into a bit of a spin and fall those you know fall back down to sea level as quickly as I can. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, uh, spread I'll say... my wings out just so I get down to sea level. Sort of coast down to a nice slow speed and yeah, land into the water and unpolymorph myself. Okay, so you sort of um what's it, uh how to turn your dragon style, just sort of um coming down towards the sea water before like gliding out, trailing down along the water side, and then landing into the water before they could get another shot off and um polymorphing back down. And you see at this point as um fiddle polymorphs you see these two ballista bolts that hit the eagle form sort of just kind of fall out from him, but he's got these two, um, as you know, because it takes on the yeah, animal form. Yeah, so exactly. you're, you yourself are not damaged, but they kind of like float out and they're like double the size of you, Fiddle. They're huge. <laughs> nice. As you're now just kind of floating there and hearing the shouting come from the docks. Amazing. Well, can we all swim? Come on, all start swimming to shore. Okay, so you're all swimming towards the the docks, yeah? Yeah. Please. Okay, so you all start swimming forward and it takes you about five, ten minutes. And then you're starting to see all these um, different city watch seem to be getting onto boats to like come out to meet whoever just fell out of the water. Um, maybe good. to confirm a kill. As you're sort of swimming out and these boats start kicking off from the docks towards you, um, it seems like the boats are going to meet you by before you can reach the docks. Well, this has all um, gone exceedingly well, isn't it? I know, this is ridiculous. They just <laughs> shoot whoever starts you start flying towards their city. Well, Here why don't we, just, so we simply just lie to them and say, wow, thank you for saving us from that mm, giant eagle. Good idea, good idea. The best idea you've ever had, Gregory. You start hearing this voice shout out, Halt! Beast from the sea! Stop Hello. your flapping now and make this easy. What? Hello! What? Hello? <laughs> Thank you! Hello. Thank you so much what? for saving me and my companions! Oh, we were so nearly dead! Oh, you start we've seeing been, the boat we've been put... captured by that evil fairy dragon! You shot it out of the sky and it exploded and we fell down to the ground. We're lucky to be alive. <laughs> Roll a deception check. <laughs> Can I give a performance check instead? <laughs> sure. Thank I'll you. <laughs> nice. 18. Okay, oh, you should have okay. seen the others. There was 20 of us up there. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just pink mist as soon as they hit the water. We're the lucky ones. You but how lucky are we really? <laughs> how lucky are we really, exactly, to have to see that? <laughs> you see this Chirene pull up, and you see this um, burly but elderly half-orc uh, poke his head over the side, and you see he's like, got one eye closed and one tooth that's been chipped, and that's on the same side as the closed eye. As he looks over, he's like, By God, men! Quick, put him aboard! Put him aboard! <laughs> As um, you start seeing all the ship hands start like coming over to give you a hand to get onto the trireme. <laughs> I just shake Fiddle's hand in the water. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good job. <laughs> Thank you. It was your Marvelous idea, chef. honestly. It was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we did this more, if we worked together as a team... I know, I know, right? Look at the things we can do. We do have to have a conversation soon. I don't know if we are the heroes. We did spend 45 minutes on that boat and we were at each other's throats. <laughs> yes, I just don't I... think we do well boxed in. We don't do well like boxed into an environment. You think that maybe we might be a little bit claustrophobic, like socially claustrophobic? You, quite possibly, you know? quite possibly. I think we've been dicked over and attacked and we're all just a bit on edge. And it's very nice to actually, you know, be free. We, we don't like being yes, locked in. Yes, it is. No, not at all. Not at all. It's it's really not not our vibe. Seriously, might need to consider that therapy at some point. <laughs> Maybe as you're both 
as you both kind of got a hand up on the chai room, having this heart to heart, you see the ship hand above you holding out a hand. Like, are you guys going to take you, my hand? Thank or you. Are you gonna yes, like... thank you. Oh, yep. sorry, oh. We're, we're still in shock. Still in oh, so much shock. <laughs> You see the half walk goes over and pulls you up so lay as you're like a bit larger than the rest. He's like, oh, there we go. There we go, love. All right, get the rest up and start pulling you all up one by one. Um, you see this um, scrawny fellow, JC, tries pulling you up and then you kind of slip out and he grabs you by both arms and tries pulling you up and like you slip out again. And he's like, oh, God, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It's my first day. And you see the half walk go, oh, move along come here and just kind of grabs you and pulls you up in one big um one big move puts you onto the tri room he's like uh so the beast has been felled then yeah yeah huzzah for the city guard huzzah, huzzah! huzzah! as he starts saying huzzah huzzah, huzzah! huzzah! Ah, drinks on me tonight fellas and they're all like yeah and they're like right pull it around we're going back home and you start seeing the trireme pull back as they start getting you blankets to kind of put over you and stuff. And he's like, my God, that was one mighty beast that was. How'd that you end really up was. getting tangled up with that thing? Well, we were... Well, you see... Sorry, you Oh, don't. no, you Sorry. go. No, no, you go. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, fine, fine. You see, we're in a caravan and we were escorting um, someone from somewhere... <laughs> And all of a sudden, down flies a mighty beast and swoops at least 40 of us up in one fell swoop. Oh, at least. At least. At least, if not more. <laughs> That's the... what at least means. For... Yes. 40... 40 people, eh? Uh, roll yes, deception I... check. <laughs> It's a nat 20. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. More, more. 80. 80. 100 people. <laughs> countless. Countless people. Countless people. people. <laughs> and half of them just exploded on contact. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it wasn't your bolt that, that exploded them. I mean, your bolt definitely exploded the, the beast. Ah, we won't tell anyone. Well, uh, no, I appreciate that, Mike. My- yeah. God, that yeah, is... Yeah, we won't tell anyone. I mean, you saved us. That's the There were thing, at right? least... I have to say that there were at least 30 women and children on there as well. Yes, yes. And but but you saved us. All... You saved us. You saved us, which is it's very important to yes, us. Yes, very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But, you know, you probably owe us one for not, for not telling everyone yes. about all the women and children. No. No, no, no. I'm, by all means, I've just... I'm... I'm ashamed that I couldn't save more, I guess, but we only just spotted it, unfortunately. Yes, no, don't get um, me wrong at all. We're, we're very grateful that we've been saved. And wait, it's, so you... it's such an honour to be sat on the same boat as such a, a mighty hero right now. Yes. But oh, it would well. be very nice if I was also here with my best friend, Terence, who was <laughs> in the clutches of that. Well, beast and <laughs> I give I give ballista uh, bolt. It just <laughs> give Gregory a blow up his head. Okay. It, it just exploded his head. <laughs> it, it really it was it disgusting. His mind. brains was everywhere. <laughs> I, well, I just I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight you, with you at see... least five, without <laughs> at least five hundred gold. I, I just uh, <laughs> I just don't you, think I'd be able see... to do it. You see the um, half orc <laughs> guy. He starts patting you on the shoulder. He's like, "Well, I'll tell you what. When we get back to the Winking Blade, I'll buy you a drink on Terence. How about that?" I suppose at least three drinks will do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you a very drink. much once again, Captain. You saved You're our welcome. lives. We are eternally grateful. It, one thing though, it would be very nice to get off of a boat. No real reason. Just want off of this boat. That's fine. Like, well, we're trying to go as fast as we can. Um, Thank you. Thank you. All right. See, so you you're in the boat for you know five minutes, ten minutes, and you pull up into the docks. And as the chai room approaches, you see a couple of dock hands seem to rush across to help the vessel wall up and it takes another about five ten minutes to kind of secure it all. You see, there's a bunch of city guard all standing along the dock, all kind of um, armed, uh, sort of. 
waiting to see who's come on just in case they have to you know put you in shackles or if it's like someone a danger but you see the half walk goes over to them who introduces himself as um commander davrak so that is d-a-v-r-a-k and um puts them all at ease and you see everyone sort of starts um putting themselves down some of them start cheering and um starts yelling everyone to go to the tavern to the winking blade as um you see he looks around to you again that one one closed eye one chipped tooth and um he's like right well um what what's your business in Alagan? then do you have anywhere to stay oh, are you uh, here yeah, visiting like, relatives so like we said we, we'd been picked up by this beast so we weren't really traveling this direction we were on a completely different oh you place, weren't coming but, here um, at all no not at all but luckily this man owns a bakery here as i point out jc oh oh is, is that one i've heard of Pro- probably not well no <laughs> yeah well so. i must do this there's only one bakery worth knowing in all of Alagan. oh yeah Sivo's bread yeah uh huh. That's <laughs> not that one. Who, who's Sivo? JC, who's Sivo? Um, JC. Yeah. As soon as you hear that name, anger streaks up your neck and starts tense into the point of aching. As Sivo is an elf who trumped you in the baking competition to have the rights to be the sole baker for the governor for the year. That's right. <laughs> so he's, so he's like your Sigismund Molech. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have an urge to burn down his bakery. <laughs> uh, bakery. Sorry. Uh, 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 mm. 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 No, it's a mighty fine bakery that I would like to frequent and spend all of my gold. <laughs> so I don't understand. Are, he... you a, are you a better baker than him? Yeah, for sure. So why did he win the award? Because um, he cheated. He cheated? <laughs> what, did, he, did he use Can superior quality oh, I can't prove it. Of course I can't. How did he cheat? Um, By making better bread? It, yeah. He, he, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the <laughs> bastard. He made better <laughs> bread. <laughs> cheater. He used superior ingredients well, and superior equipment. He's a cheater. And yeah. beat you. He, um, fair and square. He, the bastard. He replaced my... Uh, my my water with piss. <laughs> he what? <laughs> so they, <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I had pissy bread. It was rubbish. <laughs> I can imagine. No wonder you didn't win. I know you thought you would have thought I would have noticed. <laughs> this is it. Sounds terrible. Something <laughs> to see how you wouldn't actually. Like, I had a cold that day. Worse. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, yeah, was so, he very hydrated? Was Yeah, he, he literally pissed at me cornflakes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. What what a day. <laughs> wow. Well, worst day of my life. Still still came second though. <laughs> worst day of my life so far. <laughs> there are only two yeah. people in the competition. Nice. <laughs> well, yeah, now you've heard that story, Mr. City Guard. I suppose we'll uh, we'll catch you later down at that down at that tavern. Winking Blade. Winking Blade, that's the yes. one. Yes. Well, I said one drink on me, for all of you. No, all the right, troubles you've been through. One drink each, right? One drink each, yes. Good, good, good. Sounds sounds like a plan. We'll we'll catch you down there in, you know, in a little bit. I assume you're going to be there all night now. Or all day. What time is it? Like 10 in the morning. Oh, we'll, we'll probably be there for the next two nights, to be honest. Not nice, uh, you know. You got you got to celebrate a great victory over a dragon. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Well, it's quite a small dragon, though, wasn't it? Even a small dragon's a good celebration. Yes, definitely. Well, you know, dragon with feathers. I think. I yeah, yeah, a rare feathered dragon. Really is truly, truly, truly well, worth celebrating. A rare and majestic creature that the uh, the world will never, probably never see again. You you see, with his one good eye, he's like looking at all of you, and he's like, "Are you being sarcastic with me?" No. 
Oh, well, see you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you all walk off past him as um, he sort of like eyeballs all of you. As um, you all enter into the city of Alagan in early evening. Um, nice. Nice, nice. So, show us around, JC. Another another city we're visiting that you've... That's part of your backstory. Come on then, let's go to my bakery. Come on then. Come on then, I've heard good things about this bakery. All the time I've met you, all you've been saying is, Oh, I can't wait to get back to my bakery. Okay, so you walk through, so you walk out the docks and through all the dockyards and shipyards and find yourselves in the government district, which is a lot more upscaled houses, um, a little bit more space. Um, you can see people have somewhat of a small garden in the back houses from the few houses you can see, um, which seems to be a bit of a luxury within the city. Um, you pass through an open space terrace in the dead centre of this district, which has a big amphitheatre in the centre, as well as different fountains. Uh, you can see, um, off to the right of this large terrace space, uh, is a very decadent... It's the right word. It's, uh, it's just a very decadent building, basically, which is the uh, governor's office. The governor's uh, where he lives when he's voted in. Um, and in this large open space, the amphitheatre is where a lot of the electors or delegates of different parties, when they need to um, state their case to the people when there's a vote going on, come to this main area where they speak to crowds and try and win their vote. As uh, this is uh, a electoral government here. You walk past that and walk into the merchant district, which... You start seeing all the houses and the metropolitan stone jungle that you saw coming into starts taking shape. All these crisscross, mismatched buildings, all kind of built that block the other one. Uh, you see the encroaching streets. You see races of all walks of life reside here, all in unison. Humans and elves, dwarves and tieflings, orcs, halflings and gnomes all seem to have equal tolerance within the city. You see a plethora of alleyways as you walk through the city. Some seem to stop before they even start, whilst others carry on into darkness deep below. As you walk through all the streets, about 10-15 minutes par uh, pass by, you see there's still quite a few people in the streets, despite it getting to late evening, people heading to the taverns or whatnot. You arrive outside a familiar sight, John claude as you see the sign swinging above the door reads, reading, Unnamed Bakery, as you see your bakery shop. I really the name. <laughs> he never got back to me, man. I, I, I asked so long. So, I like it's it. canon now. It's fine. A little bit on the nose there, isn't it, JC? Unnamed Bakery. You know what, JC? For all of this time I've known you, couldn't imagine it having a better name. <laughs> <laughs> Sums you up pretty perfectly. <laughs> um, as you walk down and you come to the front of the shop, you see the shuttered windows have been broken in. You see the front door hangs on its hinges and multiple brown stains cake the walls outside, almost like turd has been thrown at the walls themselves. I assume no one's inside. Um, so you look round inside using your passive perception and you do have the familiar scent of bread baking inside. There does seem to be something cooking in there. I go inside. Okay. Honey, I'm you home! Heading in. <laughs> you all heading in with JC? Um, yeah, if he wants us in there. Yeah, yeah come on in. in. Nice. Well, this is where I'm staying for the next few days. Step over the, the broken door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you open the door and it just sort of comes off its hinges and you're just kind of holding it. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, is there any chance you could do some uh, mage hand I, mess mending? <laughs> I, I can try. Thanks. I just, can try. Just what I... Hmm. Sure thing. I'm going to try and fix up the outside of his shop whilst he uh, goes inside. Okay, so you're saying... <laughs> okay. Um, 
do you have mending or are you using yeah, like yeah, mage hands? I've got I've got mending. But I can imagine okay, like a so shattered window, I could Yeah, but you if could there's enough like shatter pieces, I could like hold them up and fix them. You can okay. fix the door. Yeah, I assume. Let's have a look. It repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch, such as a broken chain link, two halves of a broken key, a torn cloak, or a leaking wineskin. As long as the break or tear is no longer the one foot in any dimension, you mend it, leaving no trace of the former damage. So yeah, I suppose if Gregory holds the door in place, I could fix the bolts. Yeah, if you went through one by one, you could do it. Um, but you can do the whole thing in one go. You'd have to oh, do it in Casting time of one minute? I mean, okay, I'll start trying to repair the hinges on the door. It's going to be two minutes. Okay. So, Not JC, bad. as you walk in, and um, you will walk in, and then Fiddle, you like walk in and then start fuddling with the door. Yep. You start seeing um, a burly, fat human male, um, balding head, uh, greasy black hair that kind of like streaks down the back into back hair that seems to be hide behind a white tunic um, big hairy forearms hairy fingers that seem to be in the midst of pressing down some dough and rolling it out and pressing it down over a stone furnace as you will get the whiff of baguette in your nostrils okay Gregory Tell me of your first memory. My mother's just cooked. She's just cooked a loaf of bread. And she's <laughs> handed me some. She's buttered it. She tells me she loves me. I smile. Fiddle. Your first memory. I remember riding in the carriage as me and my mother arrived in Waterdeep. I was very young. And as, uh, as we're coming in, I'm paddying and crying that I'm hungry. So she asked the carriage driver to stop. And uh, we stop off at this bakery. <laughs> and I get handed this nice warm baguette. Okay. And John claude Being beaten. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Why'd you start up a bakery? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing that I remind you of. It's a <laughs> form of torture for him. <laughs> I, I want to live in my trauma when I'm older. Sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> no, no, that it works. It's, um... That's what you all came up with as you start seeing um this, like... Almost like, if you look at it, a slow-motion cooking montage of... Pierre rolling out the bread with a rolling pin, shaking it around, and then he's sort of like spinning it with one finger, and then he starts smearing tomato puree over it, and then putting some sausage over there, cutting up some peppers, some onions, sprinkling them on, and then spinning around a a uh, little pizza tray before like throwing it into the stone oven, and then he turns around, slow motion, and this long handlebar moustache that flicks up at the end that stretches from ear to ear as a massive red cheek smile appears over his two black eyes his broken nose and bloodied tunic as he looks over and he's like oh Jean-Claude oh no way it has been too long this was almost so wholesome if not for the broken windows and black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks over and he gives you like a big hug and he kind of like um, uh, bear hugs you and kind of cracks your back as he lifts you up. He's like, oh, 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 I have missed you, my friend. I have missed you. Oh, and who is this? Have you brought guests? Oh, he's getting ready. I would like to introduce you to my traveling band of misfits. We apparently oh. sail the seven seas and uh, try and stop mischief. Usually we are the cause of the mischief. Sometimes we are stopping it. We were saving the world some time ago, but we forgot about that. We didn't forget. We're currently <laughs> on it. Hello, hello. My name is Chitor Joseph Aldrich Fiddleswan Goldflight. I oh. am a traveling companion of your friend JC's here. Um, we are the Nine Hells Mercenary Company, and we're here to save the world. 
Magnifique, what amazing name. Oh, I love you. I love you so much. And he gives you a big burly bear hug. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> he is so cute. Oh. Hey, hey, watch it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Um, it's okay. I'm kind of cute. You... Yeah. Uh, and the other two, who are these? Um, um I'm, I'm Gregory. Oh, come in! He just gives no, you a big no, bear hug. He's <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is Gregory Weisenhorn. You are so cute as well. He loves hugs. Gregory Weisenhorn. Oh, He's... magnifique. So do I. <laughs> and this is Sole. Sole. <laughs> she also likes hugs. Go ahead. Back. <laughs> she actually does. He... <laughs> you... You, you see his kind of like big chubby cheeks look over and they just drop into this like um smoky, alluring look as he looks at you. He's like, oh, <laughs> like the... <laughs> Mademoiselle. And he like holds out a hand to like kiss your hand. No, she likes he, hugs. Like... She's the only one of us who does. <laughs> he, he, he is completely blanking oh. you and just staring directly at Sole now and he kisses your hands and he's like, Oh, you are beautiful. I must show you the city. There is is so much to enjoy. Did this man break (laughs) into your bakery? I know he's speechless. No, I am Pierre. I am... I I am Jean-Claude's assistant. That's good to know. I'm not sure we've actually met. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? What do you mean? You trust Sorry. me with the shop. Yeah, but we did that whole thing over email. <laughs> yes, I did wonder about that. You, I had been sending you letters. Uh, there had been flea I had sent, and I had no reply. I thought uh, you, oh, God forbid that you had died. Where on earth, where on earth were you sending them? Salt Rock, where uh, oh, John yeah, Cooper said we was going with his no, uh, old sailing partner, Harland. We haven't been there for a long no, time. No, I, I got letters from him. Yes, yeah, but we haven't been there for a long time. Well, where have you been? You did not say anything. You did not send anything. You, I assume you were on rock. I, yes. <laughs> Saving the world is hard. Saving the world is quite hard. We are always in trouble. Everyone we meet slows us down, generally inconveniences us, and assumes we're causing trouble. So progress is slow, opportunity to write is zero, and patience is pretty low as well. So. I'm sorry I haven't written. Please tell me what's wrong. Where is Tiny Chef? Have you seen Belladonna? <laughs> did, did, did my cat show up? <laughs> and have you seen my cat? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he looks at you and he's like, mm, mm, and he starts stroking his like long moustache. He's like, mm, perhaps we should uh, get a seat and sit down. And he, he walks over to the uh, one chair remaining in this place, goes to pick it up and it just falls apart in his hands. He's like, Never mind, uh, maybe we all sit on the floor, yes. Um, I think I'm going to leave now. <laughs> okay, so Gregory, you're no, leaving. No, no, don't leave, don't leave. <laughs> he this he can go. Important. The, the place smells, this man is strange. What do you mean it smells? It smells <laughs> good, it smells part. divine. Does it not remind you of your first memory? Oh, it is beautiful, the bread. <laughs> Surprisingly, yes. This is John Claude's secret recipe. The, this is this is all John Claude's work. This is he is an artist. So you just agreed to come and work for this man just over mail? No, I think we did meet. I was just okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I uh, he <laughs> came here with another fellow, and then that fellow left, and then he stayed and uh, set up a bakery, and then hired me as an assistant, and then the other fellow came back. Um, that uh, Harland, uh. Bleh. Whatever. Harland. Yeah. Yes, and um and then I never actually met Harland, but Yeah, he was alright. He was a bit blush for my liking, though. He seemed to have his way with uh Jean Claude, you know. He he would say jump and then Jean Claude would go. And uh yeah, so uh ever so slightly he just picked up his bow and arrow and said, There you go, Pierre, look after the bakery, I'll be back whenever. <laughs> Bye And then <laughs> That doesn't left. sound like me. <laughs> that sounds exactly like you. That is what you do. Well, you know, don't shout at him too much. He did, uh, he has come back. 
I am Sam. not shouting. I am happy. <laughs> this is my happy voice. <laughs> I even came back with the cigarettes I said I was going out for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he goes back to um turning the uh pizza in the uh stone oven and he's like yes um there was a uh a, pizza a child <laughs> when did he start uh, making pizza i said to put a tomato puree and sausage on it and oh, onions yes you did sorry <laughs> god nice nice um Good and uh he start he starts um like sort of uh, rotating it around so the back gets burnt now and um he's like uh yes there was a uh, little fellow here um i can't remember his name so i just called him little chef um yes mm. he uh came here and he said he was uh by invitation of you um as a mentor how he got here so quickly he said some mage um teleported him or something i don't really know but anyway so he was here we were having a good time and um you know the letters i was sending to you he was a boy we met in um in on salt rock and he turned out to be an orphan so jc uh you know made friends with him but we also couldn't remember his name for whatever reason so we just started calling him little chef too oh what a coincidence <laughs> what well a coincidence anyway indeed. So, uh, yeah, so I said, fine, whatever, you know, you just, um, I don't know, shine my shoes or whatever, I don't care. And um, he was here, and then um, that uh, Sivo matey uh, sent some of his more people around, and, uh, you know, like I was sending in the letters, putting pressure on us, trying to sell the bakery to him because he wants every bakery in Allegan or whatever, I don't really know, but he won't take no for an answer, so... Anyway, it's never been that bad. He's always just taking furniture. You know, he'd take the bed, then he'd take the chairs, and then a table. But, um, he took Little Chef, all right? It's not my fault. I did try to stop, but he took Little Chef. Not my fault. I'm going to go and burn his bakery down. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> just sounds... I, I agree with the spirit, JC. 100%. Uh, this man uh, doesn't sound very good. That's the bell of the door closing behind me as I walk out. <laughs> okay, okay, so John Cords walks out on a heap of... Nice, I go. Uh, okay, stress. make sure you keep cooking that pizza. We'll be back for a slice. Give us like uh, five minutes. Now. I'm going <laughs> to run out. But you only JC. just got here. Does everybody else stand up and follow me? <laughs> I would like some muscle friends. That would yeah, be me. Just in case he's bigger than me. Yeah, I get, I get to the door, turn around to Thank both you. the other two, and go, Gregory, Nine else, come on. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Thanks, old chap. <laughs> nice, and we're walking down the street oh. towards the bakery. I would also like to okay. throw my arm over Gregory. Okay, so you throw your arm over Gregory as you two are like trailing <laughs> behind. It's, it's quite warm out, actually. I... Why do you hate me? I don't. I don't. Sulks. <laughs> I just, just say, I just, I don't. It's just that, you know, usually people would ask. You, you haven't asked. <laughs> and I feel like. Can I put my arm around you, please? No. <laughs> See? <laughs> Isn't that better? I'm so mean. <laughs> See, this is called communication, so they see. <laughs> Have we not grown closer because of it? I don't think I like it. <laughs> Every action you've taken up until this point suggests the same. Mm. I shout back, don't be a quitter, Sole. You'll wear him down. Thank you. What'd you get on your investigation, John Claude? 14. Okay, so you're walking down the streets. Takes you about five, ten minutes. Um, uh, as like I said, there's quite a few people still about. And you finally come outside a shop with the placard over it saying, Sivo's Bread. And you're like, this is the one. And then you go to walk up and then you hear just some shouting down the street that kind of gets to your attention for a second. You look down and you see another shop down the street also has the wording across it saying, Sivo's Bread. Oh dear. Are there more than two or just those two? He has started a chain. He has. He has started a chain. Well, we might as well go in, in here and see if he's in this one. Ask where we can find him. Maybe we should get the people out first as well, because I, it's I not don't, their I know, fault. No, I was going to bring this up on the walk. I don't think we should actually burn it down. 
Do you think we should have some stern words with him, though? <laughs> Stealing a man's bed is pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> he stole his bed? He did. <laughs> that's what... That's what... That's what Pierre was saying. He said that, that he stole furniture, like the bed and a table. And Little Chef. I think we should burn it down. I'm with JC <laughs> on that. You, you can't just let it. men walk all over you. It's not right. Yes, yes, yes. You yes, show yes, dominance. But a slight issue of... But we don't want to be in trouble. We could be arrested. Again, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you two me, cannot talk? You two do what you want all the time. I was about to say. I can't believe me and Gregory well, have become the voice small of reason here. Exactly, we shouldn't be. <laughs> yes, but you do, and now that me and JC want to do something, you are again, so shut up. Well, JC, shall we? You see, the difference we? is, like, for the most part, it's been in small little villages. It doesn't tend to be that much, mm, <laughs> much a, in the way of a city guard. City. It's a pretty large city. I mean, didn't you see the city guard? They took down a dragon earlier. <laughs> I think that maybe you two should stay back then, so that when we get arrested, you can get us out mm. of prison. Yeah, I reckon we could. I, I reckon we could burn down at least two bakeries. I don't know how many there are, but I reckon we could get this one and the one across the street. <laughs> okay, Fiddle would like to roll a very serious insight <laughs> insight check into Soleil and JC to see exactly how serious they are. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Ah, oh, that was a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> swear to God, you got you got no idea. This is so many fucking nat ones. This is ridiculous. I'm being serious as well. Like, you can't. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I just look at them both. I just look at them both. And I go honestly, seriously. I are you are you fully going to burn down some bakeries now? We can make it look like an accident, you know, as a bakery. I don't believe you can. I think but we if can. You're, if, if, you're, if you're seriously going to burn down some bakeries right now, then yeah, maybe me and me and Gregory should step away and go back to Jay-Z's bakery and wait for it all to blow over, just in case, just in case your amazing plan doesn't go quite so well. Quite so as amazingly as you think it will. You have no faith, so go. Okay, me and Gregory, or... Oh, I'm gonna get back to the bakery. Can I ask the staff where I can find Sivo? No, fuck it. Let's just burn down the bakeries. Fuck it. Okay, that's the, okay. the spirit, I'm JC. Down this bakery. Fuck him. Look, I'm <laughs> I'm all one for personal vengeance. You two are hypocrites. I'm done with you both. Go away. If you're not going to help, then fuck off. I did the destruction of public property. This is oh, people's livelihood. Be quiet. Gregory, I think I think we should. I think we should, for the sake of you know, party freedom. We should Break us out later. To JC's oh, bakery. Let's just go to the pub. Let this <laughs> yeah, actually, yes. Yes. Good idea. Good idea. Me and Gregory are going to go to the um, uh, prickly. whatever it was. What was it <laughs> prickly. <laughs> the winking blade. The winking blade. Me and Gregory are going to go to the winking blade. We'll see you two okay. when you're done. JC, Possibly I have a plan. Honestly, you are right. You are oh, right. Me and Gregory like have been hypocritical. Um, best of luck to you both. I mean, okay. that sincerely. <laughs> Thank you. And I scamper away. <laughs> I feel like God might be angry, but God shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jason, listen to my plan. Listen. Yeah, man. Okay, so I'm going to go into the bakery. And then I'm going to start conversing with the people and then I'm going to ask for some stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to pay for it because Gregory isn't here. And then you're going to sneak in and then you will burn it and then you run out quickly. And then I will grab the people and then you go into the other bakery and then you start the fire in there. And then I will run into that bakery as well. And then I grab the people as well. Apart from the owner that has done you wrong, he can burn too. Plan? Madame, your plan <laughs> sounds beautiful. Flawless, <laughs> nothing could that possibly go I wrong. Thought. Okay. Are we ready? I need a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh! Fiddle gave me spells. Wait, let me oh. look at them. I think I have fire. Oh, I've got fire arrows. Oh, I don't even have no, to we, be... No, you don't even have to go inside. 
That's yes. perfect. Okay. So, find high spot. No one see uh, yeah. you. Okay, I would like to find a building where I can see both bakeries at once. Okay, um... And I will run in and shit? save everyone, and we I look, yeah. like, look like a hero. Yeah, so if you go in and open the door, so then I okay. can shoot the arrows through the door. Okay, don't hit then, me, though. No. And then, <laughs> that way, just, just so I don't have to break the windows. It's a good job I don't have hair. Or maybe if you could open the windows and then I can set fire to the curtains, that would be really good. Oh, that, that yeah. sounds like a very good plan. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm go I'm, then, I go in just... now. Okay, alright. Hope okay. have I found my okay. building? Um, so I'll say roll me an acrobatics check, because there's loads of purchases everywhere within the city, because uh, how it's built is like, you know, one building's been cut in half, so another one can take its place, but it's left like a bit of a triangle ledge, um, you know, two stories up. So you can find your way easily to like different ledges, but you're just gonna have to like climb your way up. Okay, so, right, first an acrobatics check. Yep. Nice, that gets me 22. Okay, you, you manage to find, um, purchase like here across the street, a little ways away, and it's a little dark triangle sticking out from this building, so it's a... Uh, Pretty much like a perfect spot for like a sniper. Perfect. Um, okay, and um, what are I you do doing? Something else? You're like hold. So I'd yeah, like yeah, to do. You can. What do you want? So I would like to be positioned on a on my ledge where I can see both bakeries at once. So I will go into one at a time. Will cause mayhem, one at a time. But before then, I would like to take some time to hide in plain sight and then also cast you know my fire arrows. Um. <clears throat> what do you mean by hide in plain sight? So, I can spend a minute to um, hide in plain sight, so when I'm not doing any actions or anything, I get a plus 10, as long as I'm not moving, to stealth. So, my idea is, is I'll just sit and chill on the ledge until it all blows over. Maybe. I yeah. Don't know. E easy enough. Roll me a stealth check. It has been the day of Nat 1s. I do have advantage. Yes! Nat 20! Nice. Like a shadow hidden, in the night. Hidden forever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Guys, I got so a bit excited. <laughs> you like um that Homer Simpson meme with the hedge, but with a shadow, you just kind of like <laughs> sling <laughs> okay. back into a shadow, yeah. and you're like, hey, 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 hey. no one can see me. And then you um cast the spell on your arrow and then it just lights you up and you're like oh shit and then you just kind of like smother the fire to a point where it's not casting any light okay. where you are and you you feel like no one's paid attention to what uh since you've climbed up uh from Perfect. people Perfect. walking down below so you're primed in a position ready in an action to shoot a fire arrow into the bakery correct um yeah well so i think let me just double check how many arrows i get half of them will go into one bakery half of them will go into the other bakery uh, i think it might be like six so three each or something give me a minute four in each that's two sets of two in each yeah okay Four, four in each okay yeah. cool um yeah so what what i'll have you do then as i'll um once you do shoot them, I'll just have you roll an attack roll, and then depending on how high you get, is like how well you target each spot with each arrow Perfect. in the house to like get the coverage. Yeah. Um, so okay. I'm aiming for the curtains. So Solo's going to try and open the windows, start ushering people out, and I'm going to aim for the curtains. Okay. Good to know. So, uh, Solo, what are you doing? I'm going to go into the first bakery. Okay, so you go to walk in, you see they're starting to like shut for the night, um, because it's like getting around to late evening and stuff, like places are closing and all that. Um, you see like the last customers just walking out with like um, some like basically just like leftover bread that's gone out on the cheap since it's been there all day and no one's collected it. Um, mm -hmm. So they walk out as you walk in, bell goes, diddling, and you see there's this um, elderly halfling woman. Um, she she literally comes up to about your thigh. Um, she's got like curly white hair, small round glasses on the end of her kind of big nose, and um, she's got this big apron on. And she's like, "Oh, 
Oh, hello, dear. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, I was just about to close for the night. Um, is there anything I can do for you? Oh, oh the please, northern lights would... are outside. Quick, you need to go and have a look. <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> I, I know. Sorry. It was just a good excuse. <laughs> I... I knew this bakery was haunted when I bought it. For <laughs> fuck's sakes. Can I, I do anything for you? I'm sorry, but I, I was just wondering if I could buy some bread, please. You said you bought this bakery. Who did you buy it from? Oh, I bought it years ago, I did, and then, um, you know, recently I sold up to be part of the chain, but they let me take it back on. So, you're not part of the chain anymore? Yes! You are? Why Why would you do that? Just out of curiosity. She like looks around, she's got like a bit of, bit of sweat on her brow, she's like, Why are you asking? I didn't yeah, say I'm anything! I'm just curious, I'm just curious. You so, you look like you're hot in here, I'm also very warm, so I, I just I just go over and open the windows, and I'm like, oh, isn't that so much better? I just I just closed them, like I said, I'm shutting up so the night, warm. why are you doing that? <laughs> oh no, I think, can, can you come outside with me for a moment, please? I just, I feel very lightheaded, and I just need you to come outside with me. Oh. Roll persuasion check. It's a twelve. Um. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. She like um walks around a bit like the little Britain skit and kind of like shouts up the stairs and she's like, Philip. Oh, we said Philip. Oh, fuck it. Philip. Philip. Yeah, this voice comes down. So it's like, what? It's like, Do you mind the store quick? I need to help this woman with her. She's feeling lightheaded. Oh, I, I think I need your something. husband as well, please. You're only a small woman, and I'm feeling very light, and I'm very big, and I don't want to crush you. She, she looks at you, she's like, Don't you worry, dear, I've raised seven children myself, I don't want... No, please, go grab your husband, you he must come, he must. Philip! Philip, mind the store! And she <laughs> Philip, comes around come the counter, downstairs! She... <laughs> she takes her apron off, and she's like, Come on then, dear, I'll, I'll, I'll take you down, I know where Let's the doctor is, just husband. out of the street. No, it'd be right. Won't Wait come for your husband. She, <laughs> she, she looks up at you, her eyes shut up, and her little like glasses are hanging off her nose now. She's like banged up against the wall now. And she's like just looking at you. Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> Can't <cry>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> And she's and just, Philip she's just downstairs. Looking, uh, Philip's not moving. Like you don't hear any feet moving upstairs. She's just looking at the stairs now, and then looking outside the door. And she's like a bit confused what to do, what's happening uh, here. She's like, for fuck's sake! I just pick her up, and I'll go upstairs, <laughs> and I'll grab Philip. No, no Philip. He, he's as you <laughs> walk upstairs. Um, she's like kind of like um hitting you in the back but not like really hard it's just like to the point she's just like put me down sort of thing and listen um, to me right now woman there is someone with a vendetta and i have very good me. intel that they're going you to hurt you, you tonight and you are you lied let me go and they're going to hurt you tonight so i am saving your life okay so just shut up she's like screaming and shouting did did you say solo made it to the door with the old lady have I seen any, no, she... anything I'm at all? I'm just going uh, upstairs to grab oh, the old oh. bloke. I, I would say roll me a perception check, because she did go to the door, then she walked yeah. back in carrying the old woman back upstairs. Mm, so I'm, so I'm, you know, this. from an out-of-character point of view, I'm, I'm looking for a way to... an excuse to not burn that down, that lady's... that bakery. Um, yeah. I think perhaps I need I to target. You're committed to, break, are you committed to burning the bakeries mm, down. Yeah, I'm, I was pretty committed. Sure. Yeah, I'm no, looking for a way out like... now. Let's see how my perception <laughs> check goes. You know, you, you, Josh, the player, are looking for a way out because you know what's happened inside the store. Yeah, JC has this, no idea. What's that's going what I said. That's store. exactly what I said. Right. Have I grabbed Philip now, Oliver? Um. Well, I'll see what the perception check is because uh, that would have been seen before you went back upstairs. Okay. 25. 
Okay, so you get the context of what's going on. She seems very harmless, like a small shop person who just got brought up. And now you've seen Sole throw her over her shoulder and storm back upstairs. And you're looking through the window upstairs and you're seeing Sole's in the process of dragging Philip out of bed in his underwear <laughs> and dragging him, <laughs> dragging him downstairs. Oh, I have wow. intel that there are terrorists in the city, okay? You see, it's like, Philip, do something! He's like, oh, Listen to sakes. me, people, I'm not trying C-Volo. to hurt you! Okay, I promise! Okay, they're, they're, can they're I, can I run inside the shop? Can I climb down from my ledge and run into the shop? Please. Easy enough, you can get in before she leaves. Um, So, John claude okay. you enter the shop just as um Sole makes it down the stairs. Tell them Hi. that there are terrorists in the city and they're going to hurt them. There are terrorists. It was going to be me. I was going to burn down your shop. But I'm not. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We gave you the store. What are you doing? The man who bought your shop keeps fucking trashing my shop. Stealing my shit, beating up my guys, stealing his fucking bed. His bed. His bed. What happened to your accent? I'm angry. (laughs) I, I'm, I'm more interested in getting my point across than role playing. I'm trying to defuse the situation. <laughs> I don't want to there burn down this lady's situation. shop. God's gonna have it out for me for years. I need to fix this quickly. And <laughs> can you imagine she, the she next looked... ten sessions will just be me being mauled by like undead uh, old ladies? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, um, she looks at you and she adjusts her glasses. She's like. John Claude, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you you were you were the owner of the unnamed bakery, weren't you? Yeah, I am, and it keeps yeah. being broken into and trashed by the man who owns your bakery. Uh, so I was yeah, going to burn them down, but I didn't realise you like own it. So I, you know, yeah, Solo was trying I to know, save you, so. You weren't burnt. I just wanted to burn down the bakery and not anyone in it. But now I don't, because now I realise it's your bakery. Where can I find the man who owns your bakery? It's it, it, that's what he did to us. That's why we had to sell up. I was, well, I, that's I a good job I didn't burn down. Sivo. No, fuck Sivo. Fuck, fuck him. I have a lot to Maybe say. Maybe you would like None to join our mission then. Hmm. What's the mission? Well, to kill the man. Fuck him up, yeah. What? Ruin his day. Kill? Just think and, and then you'll get your bakery back. You Let's don't play. owe How any money to anyone. How many can he fit up his ass? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't think I can condone that. That's terrible. No, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't kill someone for that. That's not, that's not what we're like, what are we, Philip? You. And he, you see... You see Philip has gone, got gone back up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Philip, <laughs> Philip comes down in full plate up. <laughs> I reckon five you see baguettes. Fi- <laughs> 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 Is that with or without lube? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you see Philip's walk back upstairs and close the door. And she's like, oh, fuck's sakes. Uh, like, no, we, 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 we were getting... um. We're getting uh, pretty leaned on by those um those ruffians of Sivo, so we had to sell up. We didn't want to. Hmm. Let's just fix this. Well, you didn't hear it from me, all right? But I know I can trust you, John Claude. You can trust you know, me as well. You just don't know me. No, yeah, for sure. She's she's. I mean, still. you just tried kidnapping me and my husband. I, don't I wasn't trying to save you from being you. burned alive. By me. I was going to put you outside, okay? It's not like I was taking you to an unmarked grave. Hey, what? What do you mean? Come on, Grandma, chill out. It's fine. So, who owns the bakery <laughs> next door? Um. Oh, that's uh, that's the uh, the three brothers. They um, yeah, you know, they had a little. Well, they're not so little anymore. They um. Were, were they, they also they were... leaned on by chance? Oh yeah, we all were. Where right. is the man? Where can we yeah, find where him? Where is he? Where can I find him? Yeah, where can Let's Solo find him? Let's go straight to him? the source. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's uh down 
knife stick alley all right he's got like a little hideout there oh uh, there's like a door with like a little shutter across it and you've got you've got to knock five times but it's like bang 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 you can't if you knock any bang, other way bang. you get a crossbow bolt in the back of the neck very okay. good we're sorry right. that we disturbed you tonight it won't happen again i don't know you don't yeah i'm so sorry not... grandma when i give her a kiss on each cheek I'll oh, shut the windows. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay so you shut the windows. As you give her a kiss on each cheek, she kind of just like shakes. And she's like, um, I'm not really sure what to say now. Um, well, you're going to be free soon, so. Okay, you can't include us in this. You know, if if I go, then there's no one to look after Philip, but he needs his medicine. No, I'll look We're after not Philip. going to get you involved. <laughs> she just uh, she looks at you and she's not convinced to the slightest and she's just like okay well stay safe and don't kill anyone <laughs> okay so I assume you both leave <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, where are you heading to um, I'd like to ask Sole whether she thinks we should go to do you think we should go to Navstick Alley and uh, do the old knock 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 or should we go <laughs> back to the bakery and uh we went to the pub or should we go to the pub well i don't see the point in getting the other two now since they didn't want to fucking help so i and think we just go. go down to the alley okay let's fuck him up okay let's go so you both you both go to try and find knife stick alley wherever the hell that is in this huge city um fiddle and gregory yes. as um you walk into the tavern. Is there anything in particular you you guys are doing? I think we just cut to us and we're like five pints deep. <laughs> and then, and you know the worst thing about sanctuary <laughs> was was the fact that my teleporter didn't work. <laughs> that was the worst that's, part about it. That's not even the worst part. Is think about it. Think about it really. What if we had just gone to bed we'd be fine right now the yeah. world would be saved there'd be parades yeah they'd be shouting but, but that's not even the worst and part the nine <laughs> but that's heroes. not even the worst part the worst part is when i went crazy and you had to run and save me you were only wearing a loincloth and i almost saw your penis it was so it was embarrassing. Everyone showed up and there were guards and those strange, strange that, things. And I, that, that was, was the worst nude. part. That was the worst part. Uh, that, oh, that was the worst part. That, uh, Devin. No, no. It was the fact that Elminster was a little bit underwhelming. Uh, that yeah. was the worst part. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No, the worst part was the fact you had to go through a leg to get there! Oh, it's so, so stupid. stupid! So stupid! What if someone had just fallen oh. in the lake? What if somebody what if was someone out for a swim? Exactly! Exactly! The <sighs> village is right next to the lake, and I'm sure some of the villagers enjoy a swim. Exactly! If they had just swum down like, like a couple like of did. feet. Like we did! And then just, just end up there! I know. Oh, they would end up there so and go crazy and their teleports wouldn't work and they'd end up naked. <sighs> the worst place. Pretty cool escape though. Mmm. Not gonna lie, I haven't felt that cool in a while. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we are two pretty cool guys. Pretty cool pretty guys. Pretty cool guys. Hanging out in, in Alagan. Yeah. That's the one. Pretty cool guys. Pretty cool guys. Nice. You want another drink? Oh, take another drink. Nice. I'm going to go get some more drinks. <laughs> As you guys are like, um, Phil, you like um, push your chair back and go up towards the bar. And Gregory, you're left there on the um, table, just a bit like um, half capped at this point. And then you look across at the other side of the table and you see... Um, Davrak sat there with his one eye just staring at both of you, just quietly sipping his drink and staying quiet and just sort of like not really sure what to say. What are you looking at? <coughs> it's supposed to be funny. What? I've got one eye. 
<laughs> it's pretty <been> funny. <laughs> okay. Right. So, switching back to the other two. Uh, I need one of you. I need both of you to roll an investigation check, or one of you with advantage. Oh, I can I do it with advantage? Please do. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. Still takes you a little while, but you find it in very quick time with all things considered. So you find Knife Stick Alley. It's this uh, little place that uh, you have to kind of um, look around and listen in on a few people. And you see these two like shifty fellows with uh, scarves over their mouths, sort of like uh, whispering it. That catches your ear and you kind of tail them, John Claw, to this winding alleyway that bends around uh, someone's house and then back beyond. Kind of walk down the alleyway, you and Sole, and you look over and then you see they take a left and then you run over to that corner, look around at the alleyway and you see they look left and right, you kind of press against the wall again and then bam, 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 bam. And then you hear some muffled voices before the door opens and then they walk in and then it shuts behind. You hear several locks before no noise again. And as you come round from the wall to walk down that alleyway, uh, so you're still about a good 15 feet away from the door itself. You can see all the way at the other end, the alleyway just drops as in like there's a wall there, but there's just a drop before it that just goes down. It's just like a deep drop at the end of the other side of the alleyway. JC, I think you should lead here. Why is there a large drop? I mean, you can go have a look if you want, but you have to walk past the door in order to have a look. Oh, I see. Can we just knock? Yeah, yeah, you can go up to the door and knock, um, if you want. What do you think we should do? Do you think we should try and sneak in? <gasps> Maybe you can sneak in. You can change into things. I don't think I'm the best for sneaking. I think maybe I should go in and then you sneak in. But you can just become like a... I am a werewolf, I'll have you know. I see. I see. <laughs> Sorry, I I'm such a disappointment. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can I stealth around the perimeter of the building and see if I can find a way to sneak in, not through the front door? Sure. Roll me a... Um, yeah. I mean... I suppose that that would be yeah. Roll me a stealth check, and we we'll carry over your investigation of um. What was it before? Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Roll me a stealth check to main incognito as you assess the building. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you walk down to the other alleyway, so, uh, sorry, at the end of the alleyway, you walk past the door. So first thing you know is the big drop that seems to be an old um, discontinued cistern system that goes down into some sewers. Um, seems to be a big drop about 20 feet down and then opens up into some tunnels. Um, looking around at the rooftops above, you can see it's all jagged and all mismatched like most of the other bits of the city. Um, don't seem to be any windows that lead in through the back here. Uh, the front, like I said, it's residential areas, um, so it's people's houses. Um, you do see, though, coming back around the alleyway to the first one that you entered, there seems to be a little kind of gutter in the side of the wall that seems to be uh, all these rusted gates that is there and seems to be a little avenue that seems to crawl to some noises that seem to echo down through there. So that seems to be a passage there as well um apart from that that's the only other kind of avenues you can see from where you stand um i'd like to try the try the gate great okay um so you go over to the grate, try to pull it off um it is on there tight come grab me yeah that's yeah that's what i was thinking i was trying to prep my french french voice but i couldn't okay roll me a strength check then solo Oh no, if only there was someone who was big and strong who could save me from this terrible grate. That would be me. That is an 18. 18, okay. <laughs> As you kind of rip it off from its hinges and um, it's like a loud noise and you both kind of just wince and you just got to like crouch down 
to like hopefully minimize the noise somewhat in reflexes uh, uh, in a reflex action the voices still continue on from down below but don't seem to stir at all <gasps> let us go that was close okay so john claude you're crawling through this little hole to go in right yes please okay so are you going in as well i will go to the door okay so you go around to the door so mm -hmm. uh as we wrap up this session then as you go to walk around to the door as um fiddle and gregory are like getting pissed up at a tavern <laughs> jc you crawl through this um again it all seems to be discontinued cisterns around here so it's all just this like old caked shit seems to be a theme of this session as um you're crawling through the whiff of piss is still here as you crawl through and you find yourselves there's goes into darkness and you keep crawling as the voices get louder more coherent and then there seems to be a light that's appearing from a little another little uh grate that is vertical and you're hearing the voices uh become clear as uh you hear this voice going Oh, that's uh, Pierre. He better give up the bakery tomorrow, or this little creature. And you hear this kind of like yelping and screeching of um, a kid that sounds very similar to Little Chef. He's going to get it down in the cisterns, chuck down to and for herself. Let her do what she wants with him. As um, you're hearing all these like kind of cliche British fuggers, they're all like, yeah. You tell him, boss. <laughs> You're the man. As um, yeah, this very cliche little um meeting go on in the back of this building. As we are at the end of our session. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. Yes, yeah, very nice. More than you bargained for, it seems. That was a bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, bit bit of a journey. I I did think if it was uh. Um, better just to have you guys rest the night and then continue on what you were doing but because it's obviously a place significant to John Claude I <laughs>